Good afternoon, welcome to the Seven Stars. I'm your host, Sharpie. This year, the Seven Stars is going to bring you all the hearts of the SFL. We're going to have interviews with coaches, players, and we're going to have footage with each match of the weekend. Seven Stars is brought to you by Homes in Time. Let's have a look at this week's guest star. This week's special guest is Wayne Holworth, the CEO of the Southern Football League. Thank you very much, Joel. It's great to be here again for a really exciting 2010 Southern Footy League season. Good to see you, Sharpie. Thank you, Wayne. I've got a few twist questions for you, Wayne. First question. How did you get involved with the SFL and how have you been the manager? Well, I started uh, as a president of Ormond Joel um, back in the uh, late 19, uh, 1990s and 2000, then worked at AFL Victoria and then uh, appointed as CEO of the Southern Football League three years ago. So it's been a great journey in football and enjoyed every moment of it. What's AFL Victoria? AFL Victoria is the governing body of the Southern Football League in which we're a member of and they help us in terms of our development. Question two. Were you a footy player when you were under? Who did you play for and what position? Well, uh, I, was a, I was a nippy half-forward flanker, Joel, and occasionally got onto the wing and maybe even into the centre if I was, if I was lucky. Played at Ormond Amateur Footy Club, a bit of Melbourne under-19s as well, um, and uh, enjoyed every moment of it, Joel. It was a great experience being on the ground. Did you get a kick, Wayne? Oh, I got lots of kicks. What is the best part of being the manager of the SFL? The best part of being a manager of the Southern Footy League, Sharpie, is dealing with people like you and all the volunteers. It's just fantastic to see the enjoyment that we can provide, not just the players, but the volunteers and people like you as well. What advice would you give young people interested in being involved in the local footy? Yep, well, if you want to be involved in local footy, you can be a player like most of them are, or you can be a volunteer, which a lot of people are getting into as well. Not just behind the canteen, but on a committee, waving the gold flags, being a boundary umpire, being a field umpire, Sharpie. So there's lots you can do other than being just a player. Can you tell us what new and exciting things are in store for season 2010? Yeah, we've got some really new and exciting initiatives in 2010. The Colts competition, the thirds competition, which is going to be fantastic for the league as well. The media, the coverage that we're going to get um, through Southern Stars is going to be a great um, innovation as well for the Southern Football League in 2010. It's very exciting. Lastly, who do you follow in the AFL and who will win the flag this year? Well, Joel, this is going to disappoint you, the answer to this question. I don't barrack for Geelong, as you know. I barrack for a side that's a lot better than Geelong. 16 flags and still counting. The mighty Bombers, Joel. I think they'll go all right this year, but I do think the Saints might win the grand final. Thanks for coming in, Wayne. Can you tell us the match of the week in this week? Yeah, this th week. Thanks, Joel. Great to be here again, of course, and you know, starting the, off the 2010 uh, a series will be just terrific. Match of the day this week, round two, Hampton v Mount Waverley at Peterson Reserve in Hampton. Should be a cracking game. Bluff Road. Very close to Bluff Road. Match of the day. Be there if you can. And who's your tip, Wayne? I think Hampton and Mount Waverley will have a draw. Oh, wait, and the ha Hampton will win by about five points, Wayne. Friends for coming, Wayne. I hope to see you again next time. Good on you, Joel. It's a pleasure always. Yeah.
commentary box by Matt Jules. The bounce beat, Glenn Crow, Crow Boy, he's come back and picked it up. He somehow got a boot to it and snuck it through for another one. That's the second on the board for the Crow for the afternoon. Now kick forward for the Tunners inside attacking 50. Dylan Hand! Yes, Joe, we the Dreams on the 17th of April. Round two. The first game is Chelsea Heights versus Toronto Morgan at Chelsea at 2 10. The second game is Denry versus Heverton, that's at the Dingo's home round at 2 10. Mordialic versus East Brighton and Mordialic at 2 o'clock. St Kilda City versus Spring Valley at the Peanut Farm just in St Kilda, across the road from Luna Park. Sunday up. April the 18th is Cheltenham versus St Paul's behind the cemetery in Cheltenham. That's it for round two. My tips for round two. I'm going to go Toronto Malvern to beat Chelsea by five points. I'm going to go Heverton to beat Dinner at the Dingo's home ground by seven points. St Kilda City versus Springvale at the Peanut Farm. I'm going for Springvale in an upset there at the paint to not of the last year's premiers in the Sfield. And Sunday it's April the 8th is Cheltenham and St Paul's. I'm going for St Paul St Paul's there in an upset. Now when someone starts it's time for Don't Get Me Started. This week on Don't Get Me Started, I'm gonna talk about Mick Mulvers at quarter time. Well, he do, he said something bad to Stephen Mill, but I'm not gonna repeat it on here. But he's been got a seven seven thousand dollar fine. You know how to do that, Mick Mole for Stephen Milne. He, you don't just run up to a player and abuse him. Well don't worry with Mick Mole, he's got the seven thousand dollar fine and I don't think you'll be beating all from this week because Buddy's in and I'll still beat you. Well Mick Mole should have gone up to Stephen Milne and apologise, not just abused him. That's not the the right thing to do is apologise what I would have done. Not just not just tell him Something bad, it's not nice. That's it on this week on Don't Get Me Started. Now I'm running down my AFL tips. I'm picking West Coast will get their first win at Subiaco against the Bombers this week. Next game is on the Saturday. North Melbourne versus the Sydney Swans at the Dome at 2 10. Sydney Swans will beat North Melbourne. Don't like that little Bryn Harvey guy, he's too short for football. And the third game is Adelaide and Carlton at Amy Stadium. Well, I reckon Adelaide will win it. Adelaide, if they lose this, they're four in a row, and Neil Craig might get the sack out of this sack, but he can't. Well, no, Adelaide should win their first win against the Blues. And we've got Brisbane, Brisbane Lions against the Bull on 7 10 at the Jabba. Will there be Brian, Brian and Bradshaw? But if Barry, if, I don't like Barry, but if he hits seven and Brian and for Vol have a good game, will be a close match that the Bulldogs should win there at the Jabba at 17. The next guy, Mel Melbourne and Richmond at the G. Well, Richmond are in terrible form at the moment. I reckon Melbourne will win that again for Jim Stein. $15 people are backing them to get in the eight. That, I don't know if that will happen, no way. Get your money on Theo this week at $2.02 to beat St Kilda, and I'm picking Theo this week because they'll beat St Kilda and go 4-0. I don't believe it. Toronto and Port Adelaide this week, we un unravel the premiership threat of 2009. We'll get a full crowd at Toronto this week, and last time the two teams met on, we lost that, Steve. It was Ablett put us in front of them, we lost. It was Dominic Cassisi, but we should win this at Tom Arnold. We should win it about by 55 points at Toronto. Colin was Hawthorne. Well, it's an ear, Mick Moldes. You do that spray again this week, that would be the end of your career for 2010, mate. I'll be jumping the fence if that was the John game and giving the spray to you, Mick. But Buddy's got one week, but the, the Hawks should get up and win that. That's it for Southern Stars. I'll have to find my sponsor, Homestead. Let's see, we're going to have footage of round two. Remember to go to sfl.com.au and stay sharp. Bye.